Very well. If you insist on this foolishness, perhaps it's best if you have the full power of the Omnitrix. Access Master Control. Master Control unlocked. Hey everyone, it's Nick with The Whip Shop, and on today's video we're going to be setting up this Ben 10 Alien Force overlay for this 6 foot bullwhip. But before we do so, I want to talk a little bit about the 2019 Los Angeles Whip Convention that's coming up really quick. Guys, this is perhaps going to be the biggest outcome of all time for the LA Whip Meet, and I would love to see you guys there. This is going to be once again a two-day event on the first day, January 5th, 2019. We're going to be meeting at McCambridge Park and this is going to be a day of competition and a day of socializing. A bunch of awesome people getting together, having a good time, talking about whips, cracking whips, sharing ideas. Um, I'll be there with my brother helping out. Uh, if you have a whip that you want to bring, if you are having trouble with the Turk Said Not, come see me and I'd be glad to help you with that. Um, so day one is competitions and socializing. Day two on the sixth is going to be a day of classes. Uh, some whip makers and whip crackers are going to be offering some classes where you can enter those classes uh, and you can learn some really valuable information. So all of the information about uh, the 2019 whip convention is in the description. I, I've placed a Facebook link. It'll take you to the page. You can learn about the rules, times, locations. Everything you need to know is in that link. So make sure you check that out. So let's take a look at this Ben 10 Alien Force themed whip. I had a client that came to me and expressed that he was a fan of the show. I had never had the privilege of watching it. Uh, I never really was into TV that much and I never had cable so I couldn't have even if I wanted to uh, watched it. Um, but this is what I came up with. Um, the show has a character named uh, Ben and he has this watch called the Omnitrix. And the Omnitrix has this little hourglass uh, circular pattern. And uh, this is what I've come up with. Uh, there are a lot of experimental elements in this video, some things that I never did before on a whip, and they happened to turn out. Initially, uh, my client wanted just the color themes, uh, which is black, lime green, and gray. Uh, but I decided, you know, I'm gonna make a video about this. I wanna do something a little extra, a little Christmas gift, I guess, for my client. Uh, he didn't, he, he doesn't know that this was, well, now he probably does because he's watching this, but um, it wasn't planned to do this little button on the end and the pattern of the Omnitrix watch. And I hope, uh, I hope you like it. If you haven't already, please do reach down and hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel and it helps grow the channel. Also, if you found this channel to be helpful to you guys, I would love it and greatly appreciate it if you would help me out and support the channel on patreon.com slash mixwhipshop. Without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. Alright, so I have my strands in hand and I have my whip in the clamp. To get to this point, I used the six foot strand lengths from my website. This is the second belly and these are the overlay strands for this whip. So this is a pretty simple pattern that we're going to be doing. Um, my client wanted it to be primarily black, as is the Omnitrix seen in the show. So what we're going to do is we have, look at the strands that I have here, just sift through them real quick. So I have five black in three of my other colors. Only one strand is going to be the neon green, uh, because this is a very powerful color, and I felt that just one strand is sufficient. Uh, also, I have two grayish silver strands. So the strand lengths, the way that I have these cut, you can see in the upper left corner. Um, nothing fancy about these strands. They're all a solid color. So just take a look at that, copy it down, and uh, that strand length um, card up there is color coordinated. So you can see which strands uh, are which. So the way that I'm going to do this pattern, and of course you can do it differently if you want to, is I'm going to take my three strands, uh, other than the black. I have all the black strands in the right hand, and I have my three colored strands over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the green and sandwich it in between the two silver strands. And I think that'll add kind of a neat uh, pattern. Next, I'm going to take one of the black strands, it doesn't matter which one, 
uh, I have here and I'm going to transfer it over to this group that we just made like this just like that the next step is going to be to have the black strand on top sliding it behind our handle and just cross the right over the left to make sure that you maintain that orientation just like that with the black strand on the top and make sure that your uh, middles are on the exact uh, rear of the handle. We don't want them sliding around. So the next step is going to take all of the remaining strands, which are black, have them in my right hand. As you can see, the middles are indicated by melted sections, so I can go ahead and let go of the middles. But I'm going to find the ends of all of these strands. And there should be four of them, because this is a 16 plat whip two, there's three, and four. And we're going to open up an eye on the strands that we just installed onto our handle just by pushing a little bit of slack from the right side. And now we're going to slip these black strands through the loop created by all of the strands and now we're going to close the loop make sure that when you close the loop all of your middles of those uh, initial strands are still in a straight line so that our uh, so you can see that's creeping out a little bit we want to push it back in there and make sure you maintain the orientation that we started with have the green sandwiched in between the two silver strands and the black strand on top so now we can start to feed through our black strands and the middles that are already indicated will help show us where to stop it's coming up I feel it there it is you can tie knots as well knots are uh, arguably a better idea because they're a little bit bulkier and because this is all going to be cut off it doesn't matter sometimes you can pull these melted sections right through and not even know it but a knot is like a roadblock it's like hitting a wall it will let you know where the middle is because of its larger nature okay just about there hope I didn't pass it up nope there it is two three oh there it comes i pulled the wrong strand where is it oh. what all right there is the final one coming through and there it is so one last check i'm making sure that everything uh, is still in the proper orientation as you can see, it looks like it is a little sloppy to begin with, but it'll straighten itself out. We have the green strand in between the two silvers on the right, four black strands above, and the same thing on the left side, a mirror image. So now we can begin to plait our whip, and I'm going to be doing a two-strand diamond plait. Two strands together, plaited as one strand. We're going to go under two, over two, under two, over two. So let's do that right now. Two strands on the top. The strands on the surface point to the upper right, so that means we need to start with the upper, upper right. We're going to go under two black, over two black strands. Under two, over two. Oops, this one. Over two, and then under two over two now alternating to the left hand side we have our two black strands here around the back we're going to do the same thing we're going to go under two over two under two and over two like that and then alternating back to the right strands to be plaited 
under two, over two, under two, over two. And just taking brief moments here uh, to neaten things up again. As you can see, I'm just taking little breaks and uh, I can take a look and see that the green strand is still in the middle between the two silvers and the same thing hopefully is going on on the right hand side. And yes it is, you can see they're side by side. So I'm going to continue with this handle, two strands together, under two, over two, under two, over two. And uh, we'll get to the transition, take a look at how we're doing, make sure we're maintaining that pattern, and then we'll be moving on. Well, moving along here, I like the way that the handle looks. And as you can see, we've reached the transition of the whip, and we are still in the correct orientation. Uh, you will see as soon as I plait a couple more strands here, and I'm going to go straight into the herringbone of under four over four. And you'll see the pattern come to life. So as you can see, there's the green. The silver's coming around. The other silver. Next strand is black, under four over four. And as you can notice, we have the green strands sandwiched in between the two silvers on the right and the left. I'm gonna continue plaiting the overlay of this whip in a herringbone pattern until it's time to drop some strands. Make sure, of course, that you're plaiting nice and tight. It should be very stiff to ensure that your whip has a long, springy life. So I'm working my way down the whip. Now, if you notice, we have a chevron pattern on the top, and on the left, we have that alternating pattern. And the alternating pattern is just a uh, product of what uh, happens when you plate a chevron pattern, like you see here. So we've reached uh, an area where it's time to drop uh, the first strand. Now I'm going to let this pattern uh, evolve and just kind of do as it pleases. So for that reason, I'm not going to be dropping two strands at the same time. So I have here on the left hand side the strand that's pretty short. It's a little shorter to do anything uh, with it anymore. So I'm going to give that strand that we're going to be dropping a tug and the two strands underneath it a nice strong tug. And now I'm going to be swinging it to the middle, like this. And just dropping it how I would any other strand. Now on the right side, we are still under four, over four, but temporarily on the left hand side, we are under four, over three. So I'm gonna continue plaiting this pattern until we come up with our next strand to be dropped. And then we'll drop that one, just how we drop this one. I'm gonna be doing that the whole way down to the end of the whip, dropping strands as I go. Well, here's the whip so far. I just finished giving it a nice roll on the floor. So you can see how that pattern has played out. I'm happy with it. Next step is going to be to dress up the end of the whip. I'm gonna bind this off with some artificial sinew, and then I'm going to cut it, and then we will begin assembling the heel knot foundation for this whip. So I was trying to think, what can I do to the heel of this whip to resemble the Omnitrix watch from the show? And I thought it'd be really cool if I had the uh, little hourglass uh, pattern, whatever it is, uh, on the heel of this whip. And I thought that'd be really neat. So I picked up these little circular, um, like eighth inch uh, pieces of wood, very smooth surface. I may, may or may not sand it down a little bit uh, so the paint sticks to it a little bit better and it's a smoother finish. Um, so we'll see about... Now there is a number of different sizes of circles uh, inside this package, so I figured I would take two of them, one of them uh, being smaller than the other one, 
and I could just kind of outline, uh, use that as like a, a guide, the small circle, and that will become the main emblem, the Omnitrix uh, hourglass shape in green that you see on the watch. After that, after I have a guide, I'm actually going to be hand painting uh, the little emblem onto the piece of wood, and then we will secure that to the foundation, uh, give that a layer of uh, epoxy, two-part epoxy, so it seals it off and preserves that pattern. And then we'll tie our knot. So let's get started on uh, the little piece of wood. I'm just going to take uh, some of this black modeling paint and just give this thing an overall coat. And because we don't have to be uh, precise or anything, I'm just going to use this uh, a little uh, one inch uh, foam brush. I've already mixed this up very well. Ensure that our surface is nice and dust free. And I'm just going to crack this open here. And this is a very, very thick paint. Oftentimes uh, used for models, model cars airplanes, etc. I'm actually going to cut this uh, in half. There we go. A little bit better access here. Dip it into the paint. And I'm not really going for a very thick coat here. Just enough to just cover it. I don't want there to be a uh, basically a puddle of paint sitting there. I want it to dry fairly quickly so we can move this project along. You see that? And this will probably dry in five, ten minutes. We'll see. Not very long. I am going to get the edges as well. Just, uh, just to do it. I know they won't be showing, but I just like to do it anyway. Makes me feel better. There we go, we have that painted. And I'm gonna discard this because obviously I've already chopped it up pretty bad. And it was kind of a one-time use. I think they are one-time use anyway. They're only 50 cents a piece. Well, as you can see, the black paint has dried very nicely. And I've kind of roughly etched in the uh, hourglass circular shape that will be painted in green. I think I'm going to be using a Q-tip to paint this thing. I've already mixed this green here. I'm going to completely saturate the Q-tip so that I can get it to a nice point. There we go. And uh, I think also, um, we're going to hold this little thing here, a little plate in the pliers here. I'm just going to just very carefully paint the Omnitrix. There we go. Q-tip is, is not quite as sharp as it needs to be, so I'm actually just gonna, gonna cut it off at an angle here, like this. I continue painting just with the tip here, the plastic. I can see that much better now. much more precise. I found that the, uh, the Q-tip was just not quite as sharp as I needed to be painting this detailed little pattern. And this is something that I decided to do extra for my client. 
he didn't ask for this although he did say that he wanted it to be resembling the show as close as possible so I figured uh, you know this this would be a good video and uh, we decided or I decided that is to, to go with this and, and do it and see how it turns out a little hand painted thing there we're just gonna fill that in just a little bit more I sometimes have the uh, I have a way of speeding up when I do very detailed things like this and it's very important to maintain maintain the same speed throughout the entire painting process so I'm just gonna turn it around a little bit and get the other side make sure I can see that good filling in the other arc make sure I don't drop it that would be bad there we go a little bit more paint on there I couldn't actually find a paintbrush that was fine enough to do this unfortunately so dip there I think we'll be done just over the arc there there we go now if you notice these corners here are a little sharper than the corners on the part that I just finished so I'm going to try to make those a little bit pointier there we go that's better and there we go there's just a little little Omnitrix disc there that will be uh, attached to the heel of the whip of course I'm going to let this dry and after it dries I'm going to be uh, sealing it with some two-part epoxy so that the wax doesn't affect it. Just a little bit more of a point on this side here. There we are. Excellent. Well, as you can see, it has dried very nicely. The next step is going to be to seal off our little uh, painted disc here with this two-part epoxy and sealing it off will protect it uh, from scratches and it will also protect it from the hot wax that we're going to be dipping the whole whip in uh, when it's finished. A little stirring stick that they gave us. There we go, we'll allow that to dry. Give it a second coating if needed. Well, I've allowed about 20 hours for this little thing to dry. And I'm just kind of going for that button look. There's a nice little glossy shine with the uh, two-part epoxy that's going to be sealing it off. And uh, at this moment, I have a hot glue gun warming over there in the corner. And we're going to be gluing this button to the heel of our whip. Just like that. And when we do that, the hot glue in and of itself isn't, alone, uh, isn't enough, in my opinion, to hold it. And we're going to be relying on those strands of our Turk set knot to permanently hold this in place. And the wax will lock everything in place. Well, the glue gun is hot and it is time to fasten this button to the heel of our whip. Make sure that it's... Whoa! Try that again. Let's get a little bit of hot glue on the back side of this. 
all around, spread it around. And give it a little twist to help it adhere to the uh, heel of the whip. And that looks good. What we're going to be doing is filling in this little little crevices that goes all the way around just so that the parachute cord sits a little more evenly and isn't encouraged to slip off this rim. I'm actually going to be using the glue as my little barrier. That'll go all the way around. I'm just gonna just kind of work that in, that bead in with my fingers, sealing it off. I do this all the way around. That's pretty good. Now once this uh, the hot glue on the edges dries, I'll be able to go in and uh, wrap a little bit of artificial sinew around it. And also hot glue melts at about 245 Fahrenheit. We'll only be waxing at uh, approximately 190 Fahrenheit, so we don't have to worry about the glue melting. There we go. That's just great. Oh, that feels much better. I don't have that gap going all the way around that I was worried about for a while. We're going to let that cool. We'll wrap a little bit more artificial sinew around it. Also, maybe a little bit more hockey tape to build up a little bit of a swell. Looks good. A little bit of artificial sinew and just to give that knot a little bit of a swell in the midsection. And I think that's just about ready to tie our knot. I am going to give it one last layer of hockey tape just to cover up all of that sinew to ensure that none of it starts peeling. I've never coated a emblem like that in the two-part epoxy. But I think it's going to work well. Yeah. So here is a close look at the knot that I've begun tying. I started off with a 5x4 Turkshead knot. I expanded it to a uh, 7x6. And finally I expanded that 7x6 to a 9x8 Turkshead knot, which is what we see right here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is take some 95 parachute cord and retrace my path. So when this is all said and done, uh, this is going to be a two pass uh, nine by eight Turk said not. And I'm gonna be doing a video on this very soon. 95 parachute cord does have a single strand that runs in the core. So I'm gonna be pulling that out. So there we go. I've fused the 95 parachute cord gutted onto our end of our strand here for our single pass, 9 by 8 Turk said knot, and I'm just going to follow the leader on this strand the whole way around, and I think that'll be an interesting uh, contrast. Let's see how it looks. Well, here is the knot after the roll. I think that black spiral gives it kind of a, I don't know, I'm trying to get it as accurate to the, uh, the show as possible, and I'm pretty happy with it. So now it's time to just tie a quick transition knot. And uh, this thing is ready for the wax. Well, there's our transition knot. There's our heel knot. It's time to dip this whip in the wax. You can see our chevron pattern on the front. And on the side, we have a nice alternating pattern with that lime green strand sandwiched in between the two silver. And I think the silver is going to darken up a little bit. Uh, with the wax. Hoping it will. I think it will. All the paracord used in this whip uh, was from the paracordstore.com. Make sure you check them out. Great, great paracord at great prices.
Well guys, I want to thank you all for stopping by and watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and I hope to see you all at the 2019 Los Angeles Whip Convention. Thank you.